What you doing, Heather? Trying to take these stickers off, these old ones. Kind of been on there a long time, hadn't they? See if that little bit of heat there made a difference. Oh yeah, that helped out a lot, didn't it? A little bit. <laughs> Good deal. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now in our last video, we talked a little bit about servicing gear, when you should service your gear. And we talked about, you know, following the manufacturer's recommendations or getting it serviced anytime it tears up and not waiting till the next dive season. On well, today's video, we're gonna specifically be talking about dive cylinders themselves. And more importantly, we're gonna be talking about stickers on dive cylinders. Now, we've actually made this video probably about six or seven years ago, but we wanted to kind of do an update video for our newer viewership. So in today's video, we're going to be focusing on why do we take off stickers during a visualization process, and we're going to talk a little bit about why you shouldn't be too upset when your service te technician takes those stickers off. So guys, as you can see here, Miss Heather is taking off the stickers on the cylinder. This cylinder here is going through a visualization process and we've got several more to get done today. And you'll notice none of these cylinders have any stickers on them, minus that nitrox one, but none of these have any stickers on them. That means we've already, you can kind of see them in the floor. We've already took off most of the stickers. And I wanna talk a little bit about why we do it. And then I'm gonna talk about the legality of doing it as well. So in short, the reason we do this way back when, this was even, even before my time in the industry, when cylinders were condemned. That means they were visually inspected and they got condemned because they did not pass that visual inspection. Literally, people would either drill holes or shoot holes through these cylinders so that they would not hold any pressure. And that's how they were condemned. And unfortunately, that is not the legal way to condemn a cylinder. One of the things we do nowadays when we condemn a cylinder is we actually take said cylinder and we damage the threads here to where a valve will not screw into it. And I'm kind of show you on this one here. I believe this one's been cut through. If you look down in there, you'll see where the threads have been damaged to where a valve can't go in it. Now this one here, we've made into a bell that we're gonna hang up here at the shop. This one here is gonna be getting condemned, so we're gonna damage these threads where you can't get a valve in it. But no longer do we actually drill holes or even shoot holes in the side of the cylinder. Now, why do we not do that? Well, it's simple. These are aluminum. You can very easily TIG weld a hole and then you know sand it down, repaint over it. And then you can even put a sticker over it so that it gets hid from the visual inspector. Now, most visual inspectors are trained to tear off stickers anytime we do a visual inspection because to do one properly, we have to take the stickers off. So that's what we're doing here. That's why your visual inspector is gonna take your stickers off. And that even includes these nitrox stickers here. So if you've got a nitrox bottle, every time this is gonna get visually inspected, trust me, this sticker is gonna get torn off. A new one's gonna get put on. Yes, you're probably gonna get charged for it. It's only two or three dollars, but that's why we do it is because we can't completely visually inspect this if we can't see what's underneath that sticker there. Now, as far as legality goes, <clears throat> why do we do that? Well, in short, we do that simply because we can. We're authorized to do that. There are CGA gas laws that kind of determine how we do visual inspections, and we can go in here and do that. So when you get upset because you lost your favorite sticker, maybe you had a turtle or a shark sticker or a mermaid sticker, you're not really going to hold any grounds. Plus, when you get a cylinder visual, you do sign a waiver that says we can do a proper inspection by taking off these stickers as well. So there you go, guys. Tank stickers. They do look good. They make your cylinders kind of unique in general, but they are going to get taken off. So please don't get too attached to them. If you want to put stickers on, buy a couple of the stickers, a couple of the same sticker, just knowing that every year they're going to get taken off. Now, if you would like, bring those extra stickers in when you get a visual inspection. We will be glad to stick that sticker right back on there for you. Just like we do with these Nitrox bottles, we take your sticker off, we get a new Nitrox sticker, and we put it right back on for you. So if you got a couple of spares you want to stick it on, we'll do that. Just bear in mind, any sticker that you have on there, 
It's going to come off during the visual inspection process. Now, one final note that I want to go over with you. These are our visual inspection stickers here. All right, it's got our little logos. Most dive shops going to have something similar. Um, this is really going to go out to the other visual inspectors out there, not so much our normal viewership. But please take these off when you do a visual inspection. When I have a customer bring me a cylinder and I need to fill that cylinder and I go to look at the visual inspection sticker, there should only be one visual inspection sticker on it. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. And yes, I've had a, a cylinder come in with over seven visual inspection stickers. And they weren't even put in order. They weren't stuck on top. They were stuck all around that cylinder. And I had to search and search and search to find the right visual inspection sticker. So please, one visual ins inspection sticker per cylinder. And for the love of God, take this to heart. Stop putting visual inspection stickers on the bottom of these cylinders. That is not where they go, okay? So there's two main places you can put them that makes our job as fill operators super easy. One, you can kind of put it around the crown area here as long as it does not block any of the letters or the numbers that are stamped in here. So the crown area is a great way. We do that a lot with, say, nitrox. So you'll see this nitrox sticker, we put it around the crown as long as it don't block any of these numbers. Or you can put it where we do on our cylinders. You can take this right here and you can go on the back side. It doesn't really matter front or back, we always do it on the back. But you're gonna line it up with the valve, you're gonna go straight down, and if there's a tank boot, you're gonna put it right above that tank boot. If there's not a tank boot, you can put it at the bottom, just not on the bottom of the cylinder, okay? I shouldn't have to pick a tank up and look at the bottom to see the visual inspection sticker either up top around the crown, anywhere on the sidewall here. I prefer to put them at the bottom of the sidewall. So just a little food for thought for other visual inspectors. Please take off stickers. I know you think your customers are going to be mad at you, but other visual inspectors are going to be even madder. And usually when a cylinder comes in just for a feel and there's multiple visual inspection stickers, I go ahead and take all those other ones off anyways. I've never in my career had a customer get mad at me for that. But yeah, food for thought, guys. Be careful what stickers you put on your tanks because they're probably going to come off. Buy a couple extra ones if you want them to get put back on, but don't get upset because by law, that's what we have to do. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, and we'll discuss it. But until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.